I'm Ann Wynn with Cambridge Health Tech Institute here at the 2013 BioIT World Conference and Expo in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm very pleased to have with us today two speakers from our workshop on software for clinical genomics. Conrad Karczewski, who is a graduate student in biomedical informatics at Stanford University and the co-author of the book, Exploring Personal Genomics and Nazneen Aziz, who is the Director of Molecular Medicine of the Transformation Program Office with the College of American Pathologists. They are also going to be appearing again for two short courses at TCGC, the Clinical Genome Conference in San Francisco, this June 25th through June 28th. Thank you for coming today. So a common theme of your workshop yesterday was um, the impact of next generation sequencing and the resulting rapid change um, of clinical genomics. Nazneen, my first question is for you. Why do we need analytical standards for NGS clinical genomics? Um, uh, first, before I begin, I would like to say that any uh, statements or opinions I express here are mine and not the College of American Pathologists' official policy position. And regarding your question on why do we need standards, um, even though NGS is a high throughput and very low cost test, it is, after all, a very high complexity test. And it has many parts and many processes that need to be, uh, which are not uh, really like a simple single gene test. And it's mainly to do with the high volume. And because we are talking about patient reporting and patient management based on those reports and what the variants imply, um, we need to have definite standards of how things should be documented, how the test should be validated, and that's a, a place where we get a lot of question, what to validate, how long to store, and so for that, uh, just so that this technology is successful in the clinical treatment, it is extremely important to have standards. And, and the same goes with bioinformatics, is again, we are talking about the hefty data volume that a single gene test or any molecular test does. And that can lead to chaos because we are talking about, you know, 3.5 to 4 million variants per uh, genome. And ultimately, you know, that's where the field is headed from gene panels to exome to genome. And therefore, it's just the management and how do you, how do you store, how do you manage, how do you kind of analyze because there are a lot of bioinformatics uh, challenges that remain in the field in terms of, um, you know, the s uh, same genome through different variant colors will call variant differently. So we are after the patient truth. So for all of that, we need to have very clear standards of how people should be dealing with this test before they put it on their lab as, a, uh, as an offering for patients. Thank you, Nazneen. Conrad, my next question is for you. Where does consumer-driven or personal analysis fit into clinical genomics? I think the personal angle is going to become very important over the next few years. Uh, every individual is a combination of, has a number of rare variants, thousands of rare variants, uh, different combinations of common variants that really blend into a unique uh, signature of, of, of that person and uh, understanding this is going to be important both from a clinical perspective but also from a personal sense knowing exactly what those variants mean for you and uh, and how they fit together. What is the biggest barrier to the adoption of NGS clinical genomics? Um, the way I look at it I think our biggest barrier is also our biggest opportunity and that's our knowledge base. We really know very little and we are discovering as I s said before about 3.5 million variants per person. We know only a very very minute fraction of that of what it implies and what it means. So it's really our knowledge base and the technology has far surpassed uh, our knowledge. So, but that is also where our opportunity lies, is that the more we sequence, the more millions of variants that we can data mine and understand what it signifies, we'll learn a lot more as to how to deal with this novel variance. And thank you. And um, Conrad, do you have some insights into this too? What do you think are the barriers? Um, I'm, I'll agree with uh, what Nazine said. Um, uh, I think that a lot of the, uh, some of the issues are definitely from the knowledge base, but also on the interpretation um, and developing the proper tools for interpretation of these variants. Uh, and 
you know, some one of the as far as the barrier to adoption into the clinic goes is um, figuring out exactly how to present this data best to clinicians that will then be able to uh, read this as if they were just reading a blood test or some lab, uh, clinical lab rather than having you know no doctor's going to have time to sift through millions of variants or even hundreds of, of variants uh, even if you prioritize some of them. So it is going to take some time to create a best sort of framework for that. And the final question also for both of you, will we need interpretation services for clinical genomics? Um, I think that a lot of things are changing and we are seeing that um, in terms of uh, how a clinical test is done because again of the data volume and that Conrad mentioned before that it is not possible for a physician to sift through about so many millions and to make sense of that. So much of what we are seeing in the clinical testing world is changing the model. So I think there will be some level of clinical services required, interpretation services, but also I think clinical decision support tools within the pathology lab that might help the lab um, you know, personnel to kind of filter through these variants and make a more valuable report. So I think it's, a, it's going to be a mixture of different kinds of business model that we see. Some will be services, some will be tools within the lab. And your thoughts on this, Conrad? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree, again, I agree, but I think that um, part of it's going to be uh, some some of it might be businesses and uh, um, other companies that come out that actually offer these kind of services at first. I think to some extent we'll see a subspecialty of uh, of doctors that are some sort of genomic clinicians uh, that will uh, then be able to help in this sort of uh, in this realm. And. And what Conrad said is really important that there will be a subspecialty of clinicians who are more knowledgeable and right at this moment it's really missing and that may take a little while. It might uh, take about a few years before we get a fresh crop of medical uh, graduates who are really focusing on genomics, not just genetics. So thank you again to both Nazneen Aziz and Conrad Karczewski for spending some extra time with us and sharing additional insights into the world of clinical genomics. Again, we are here at the 2013 BioIT World Conference and Expo in Boston, Massachusetts, and they will also be appearing again at the TCGC Clinical Genome Conference in San Francisco this June 25th through June 28th. Thank you.